we need to eat to get the energy to run and jump and play. We need to eat to mend ourselves when we are hurt and we need to eat to grow. We have three young gorillas. The youngest gorilla we have is Shanga and she's six months old now. She was about a kilo and a half when she was born and about this high. And now she's about this high and about three and a half kilos. And this has all been on just feeding from her mother. The mother's milk contains everything that the baby gorilla needs to grow. But babies eventually need to move on from milk to have more solid food. And even from before this baby was born, all of the teeth were already there. They were in position, high up in the gums, just waiting for the right moment to come through, starting from when the baby is about six months old. Here's some speeded up film where you can see the top two teeth actually growing and pushing through the gums. This takes about six weeks to happen, and no wonder babies cry when they're teething. part of a healthy lifestyle, but so is food and what you eat. Think of your body like a car. If you put petrol in a car, it will go. But if you put the wrong type of petrol in a car, it will start to go wrong. 60% of what you eat should be carbohydrates. This will give you energy and are foods like potatoes, rice and pasta. You also need protein, which will make you grow strong and healthy. And these are foods like seafood, meat, and lentils. And finally, for pudding, I avoid sugary, fatty things like chocolate and cream cakes, and I go for fruit. All over the world, people eat a wide variety of foods. But whatever you eat, it's important to eat a good range of different foods, to eat a varied diet. to eat so they have energy, so they can repair themselves, it helps them to get over illnesses. Gorillas eat a large variety of vegetables and fruit. They eat a selection of things like lettuces, tomatoes, things like oranges, apples, pears, spring onions, pineapple, basically anything that's vegetarian. Vegetarian means that the gorillas never eat meat. This is for the penguins. We have got one baby penguin, his name's Chestnut, he's about six months old now. His mum and dad didn't want anything to do with him when he was born, so we had to look after him and hand rear him. That involves basically feeding him fish, and we, we put him into his mouth and then he swallows them. Between 20 and 30 fish each day. He's a very hungry penguin, very demanding. If he didn't eat, he would lose all his body weight, get very sick, and then eventually he could die. We need teeth to bite and chew our food so that we can swallow it. We have here the skull of a lion. 
and you can see the lion has different teeth for different functions. Here at the front we have killing teeth or canine teeth which actually break the neck of the antelopes that they feed on and back here the cheek teeth are called carnassials and they're designed to actually slice through meat like a pair of scissors. So they're very very sharp They're very teeth. sharp. Here we have the skull of a horse. And if we look at its cheek teeth, its molar teeth, you'll see that they're quite a different shape to those of the lion. Instead of being like the blades of a scissors, they are in fact broad and flat, and they have these ridges running across them. And they're designed to actually grind up grass into very small pieces. Massive. That is just one tooth from an elephant, and it needs that to grind up the vast amounts of vegetation that it eats every day. It's so heavy. Look at the root on that. It's massive. And what is your favourite set of teeth? My oh. favourite set of teeth in an animal are the giant pandas, mm -hmm. because the giant panda evolved from the same group of animals as the lion. It's basically a carnivore, but because it feeds on bamboo, its teeth have evolved a quite different shape. They're broad and flat, rather like the horse's teeth, for grinding up that very tough bamboo. But how do animals keep their teeth clean? Well, mainly it's by feeding on the right food, which helps keep their teeth clean. But some animals do actually have tooth problems, just like us, really? but not as frequently. Lots of children like fizzy drinks, juices, and squashes, but dentists are getting very worried about the damage that these drinks can do to teeth. All these drinks contain sugar. Bacteria can change the sugar into acid, which damages the enamel coating of the teeth. The teeth then start to rot. Some fizzy drinks are designed to have a high sugar content for energy. Researchers found a standard Lucasade can had the equivalent of 27 lumps of sugar. Coke, 11 and a half, Pepsi, 11, Tango, 10 and a half, and Fanta, 10. Inside our body are the bones of our skeleton, supporting our body and holding it up. The skeleton also provides a protective cage for all the delicate organs inside. As we grow, so our skeleton grows with us. This is a real human skeleton. It's made up of lots of different bones. In all, there are over 200 bones in everybody's skeleton. There are 26 bones in each foot, 
and 27 in each hand. Mm. These are your ribs. You can see they're curved. They come all the way around from the back to the front and they protect your insides, like your heart and your lungs. The backbone's made up of all these different sections and each section is called a vertebra. That's where we get the word vertebrate from. and their skeletons. Birds like this pigeon. Amphibians like this frog. And mammals like humans and this cheetah. They all have skeletons. These are all fish which we would find in the Atlantic. Uh, we have gilt-headed bream, which have a black patch on the side of the gills, and also we have sea bass in here as well. One of the ones that we have in here is the turbot, and here we actually have um, the bones of a turbot. This is the spine and some of the bones coming off which would protect the delicate organs of the fish. Some animals have skeletons on the outside of their bodies. An outside skeleton protects like a suit of armour. This sort of skeleton doesn't grow as the animal grows, so the animal has to have a new one, like a new set of clothes. This bronze bug has grown out of its skeleton, so it's getting rid of it. It wiggles its way out of the old one, then waits for the new skeleton underneath to harden in the sun. Skeletons can be remarkably flexible, but the bones of a skeleton don't move on their own. They need muscles to pull them. are very important. Uh, you use muscles every time you move. You've got over 600 muscles in your body. So if you smile, you've used muscles in your face. If I wiggle my fingers, I've used muscles in my hand. So every time you make a movement, you will be using muscles. <coughs> muscles are attached to bone by a tendon. If I want to hold my arm out here and I want to bring my hand up towards my shoulder, I've got a muscle on the top and a muscle on the bottom and the muscle on the top has to get shorter and contract. At the same time, the muscle on the bottom will get longer and relax. And then when I want to go and push my arm back down, the muscle on the bottom gets shorter and contracts, and the muscle on the top gets longer and relaxes. So they work as a pair to allow us to have a nice, smooth movement. The muscle on the top pulls the arm up by contracting. Then, if you want to put your arm down, the muscle underneath has to pull instead, so the two muscles work together. This is the National Judo Squad in training. Judo players actually use all their muscles when they do judo. They need their muscles to be very strong and they need to be very flexible. So they do lots of different exercises to train different muscles to do different things. Oh. 
<laughs> For muscles to work, they need oxygen. When we exercise, we use more oxygen, so our lungs need to take in more air. This machine measures how much air Vicky's lungs can hold. Take a nice deep breath and blow out as hard and as fast and as long as you possibly can. That's great. Keep blowing, keep blowing, blow hard all the way, keep it going, keep it going, right through to the end. Great. <laughs> well done. Ah, oh, dear. Right, now what we can see here from this uh, graph that your lung volume ah. is 3.3 litres. That tells me that you can get 3.3 litres of air into your lungs every time you take a deep breath. Right. One of the key things for exercise is the efficiency of the lungs and getting the oxygen from that air to the working muscles. We're going to measure that on the treadmill. Vicky must run for as long as she can on the treadmill. John can then test the strength of her heart and lungs by measuring heartbeats per minute and the amount of oxygen she uses while she's running. 80 beats per minute. Your oxygen uptake is 45, so it's still going up. That's good. Great effort. Well done. Absolutely terrific. That was eight minutes and 15 seconds.